Hello everyone, welcome back. It's been a while. The movie for today is The Exorcist. I want to remind people that these videos are based off of my opinion, along with research that I do. Uh, if you have a different perspective, I would love to hear it, and I urge everyone to do it, but after you've watched the full video, so you know exactly of what I say, because sometimes I repeat myself. Without further ado, these are the topics I want to talk about, and we're going to get right into this with the demon and the exorcism. So here we go. Starting off with the demon. To go about this the correct way, the demon's name is Pazuzu, but for the sake of this video, and for the fact I think I'm butchering that name, I'm going to refer to the demon as it, even though he is in fact a he. Both in the beginning, and the one involved in the possession, which are the same demon, we have to look how the demon came into contact with the girl, both literally in the movie plot and figuratively as in what it all means. Specifically, the demon was literally let loose, or dug up, from the archaeological site in which it was free from in the tomb. You may think, Dylan, can't a demon exist on every plane? Isn't a demon a spirit? The answers are yes and no. Demons have to have a host to interact to the physical world, and allowing the child to become the host was how the demon became a physical identity. As for the spirit thing, no it isn't. A demon was never alive, therefore it can't be a spirit. This also grants it the knowledge of everything going on. A spirit wouldn't have an all-knowing demeanor due to the fact its energy would be spent trying to stay connected to the host. But a demon feeds off its host, meaning it grew stronger with every soul it trapped, and every ounce of misery it caused. The Exorcism. This was a very important scene. In fact, it's what the damn movie is named after. So how does it fare up in terms of plot? Rather fantastically, actually. The Exorcism isn't blown out of proportion in terms of drama, but is tense enough to draw you into a scene of danger. Why? The acting. Duh. More specifically, the two priests who are relentless against the demon. What they do is common practice in an exorcism, which does require at least one priest with one other individual in which one priest reads the exorcism prayer, which is a prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. It has to be a priest who reads that, while another individual, or priest, reads scripture from deliverance. Trying to use Christ to force the demon or spirit out of the person, however, will is the only way the person can truly win. Hence the ending being so predominant. The two priests. Essentially, this ties back to more personal demons and growth. What? Can't this just be a family-friendly exorcism? Sadly, no. See, the daughter doesn't have a father in her life and needs one to straighten her out. And that's what she will receive. A father figure. Ha 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 ha! Ah, that's a... <laughs> that's a pun. Get it? Father? Priest? I kill me. Um... <clears throat> the old one died because he was too old to be her father, but the younger one saved her, like a father would. It is so obvious it hurts. <laughs> Looking at her in a character form, she is only relatable as a young child, though the gender could have been flipped and it still have the same effect. She longs for a father, and she longs for a friend it seems, with her mother constantly moving around. So, she goes to the nearest form of comfort she can find. The Ouija Board. Probably one of the easiest horror cliches there is. However, in this case, it was done right. Let's look at it through plot, then we'll examine how the Ouija Board is traditionally used. In the film, she uses the Ouija Board to talk to the dead, and after she's done, she ends the conversation. Or rather, she doesn't. See, the movie missed a detail, which can lead people to believing the Ouija board is what led to her possession, which it did, but not without fault of the user. The board, once activated, is not like a phone or a window in which beings can communicate and not do anything, then they leave. Rather, it is a door with limits that a being is allowed to sit at, and then, the longer it stays, the bigger the chances it has of breaking down the barrier and breaching through the only connection it can make. In this case, Reagan was the only one to touch the board, who also didn't end the conversation, so the demon latched onto her. Huh. <sighs> Looking at this from a practical standpoint, the Ouija board has three rules that have to be followed. Number one, be serious, it's not a game. Number two, always say goodbye. And number three, never use it in your home. 
All of these rules taken into consideration, it's no wonder this happened, because literally every rule was broken. Now, while the film would have you believe the archaeological site dug up remains, which freed the demon which was focused to Reagan based on the Ouija board and led to her possession, this simply can't be true. My guess, based on my knowledge of the paranormal, the demon would have been waiting around its statues, which show up during the exorcism, by the way, slowly biding time until it was able to find a link, the priest returning home near Reagan, who opened a door with the Ouija board, would be much more likely once put in the sense of it needed a weaker host. A priest would have fought it off in its weakened state. What an excellent day for an exorcism. You'd like that? Intensely. But wouldn't that drive you out of Reagan? It would bring us together. You and Reagan. You and us. So the notion of sacrifice. So, looking at the end of the film, Father Karras throws himself out of the window instead of continuing the fight with the demon. By allowing the demon access when he screams, Take me, take me, like using a Ouija board without saying goodbye, this opens the door for good old Pazuzu to come strolling on in. The catch is that instead of allowing it to feed on him, Father Karras takes his own life and takes away the demon's host. However noble this may have been, there is a reason that one demon beat two men of God. Pazuzu is older than Christ. The power they were trying to beat him with, unfortunately, was a newer power as Pazuzu is an ancient Mesopotamian god leading to our next discussion of religion. This comes down to a battle between two religions. And in this corner, weighing in at 2,017 years old, we have Jesus Christ. And in this corner, weighing in at over 5,000 years of existence, we have Pazuzu. When you look at who is older and who would have more cultural ground, it's no wonder it took two men of God to take on a God, and they only won by a technicality. However, when one is concerned with losing their faith, maybe not have them be the one to try and take Pazuzu solo, ends up having to kill himself just to stop him. But hey, thanks for watching. I promise I'll have video games up soon. I plan on doing horror stuff. I may even do a little bit of showcases. Let me know how you like this format. It takes a little longer, but if it's what you guys like, I'll keep at it. Comment and rate the video. Subscribe if you'd be so kind. 